take good care of her, okay? In this Bondi Vet compilation, we reveal the most terrific attacks that left us shocked to our core. From a terrified cat left fighting for its life. She's in a very dangerous situation. To a cowardly screwdriver assault. I just don't understand how something like this could happen to him. Like, he didn't deserve this. And a brutal attack from a wild hyena. The hyena has actually jumped over the fence and then tried to essentially rip its face apart. These are Bondi Vets' most savage attacks. It just makes me so angry that someone could have done this. I left this morning on my way to work at about 6.30 and got home tonight at about 7.30. And normally she's at the back door chomping at the bit to get, to get inside and um, found it a bit odd that she wasn't there. So I went around the back and I found her doing this. I wouldn't believe you'd actually need that muzzle. <laughs> oh yeah. <sighs> Zena's owner is out of town, but his flatmate Gareth has rushed in with the trembling Rotty. She really is displaying the classical signs of a, of a snail bait poisoning and you do have to have to act pretty quickly on these guys because they, as you can see, their system just goes into overload. Come on, go up to it. You just keep calm there. They're very good. If it gets too far, they can actually go into seizures. When that happens, it's very bad news. You've had some problems with neighbours, you suspect, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And generally when, um, when she's kept outside and she might bark a bit, and I think they're a bit pissed and they try a bit of, I'll, I'm assuming the last time that she was poisoned. A phone hookup to the owner confirms the suspicion of poisoning. To me, it looks as though she's actually had something like a snail bait. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is give her an injection of, of something called atropine, which is going to hopefully reverse a lot of those effects. Yeah. That, that's all right with you? Yeah, yeah, all right, no worries, mate. This one's a pleasant injection. The, um, the next ones won't be so pleasant. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually make her vomit. I want to get that stuff out of her stomach so she stops absorbing it, but I'm just trying to prevent her going into a seizure right now. This is a, what looks quite bizarre, but essentially it's a tablet that we're going to inject. Once this kicks in, she'll want to vomit. Now, yeah. it should be enough. I'll get this off. This is going to be a really tough moment for her because she's already feeling yeah. incredibly bad. Go on, go. Perfect, here we go. Go on, go. Yeah, it does stink, doesn't it? You're in charge of that tape. Oh, great. <laughs> Lucky you. Can you pass me that tape as well? Zena's vomit is green. Chris now realises she swallowed snail bait containing a deadly poison called meteldehyde. There's no antidote for that. It's a little bit funny that the guy who owns the dog is a cop and so is a housemate and so are all these guys here. Is this dog being poisoned? The person that poisoned it doesn't know what he's messing oh, with, he's does he? He's in trouble. The intravenous route just, just, she just doesn't seem to be responding to that and that's probably a result of the poisoning itself. Mm -hmm. What I'm actually going to do here looks a little bit strange but it works. There's a great blood supply to the eye and that gets absorbed pretty quickly. Yep. It's a bit of an irritant though, mm -hmm. so she won't like this. Paul, Zena's owner, is now racing back to Bondi to be by her side. Once you get to know her, she's the most beautiful, friendly, lovely natured dog. She's an absolute, she thinks she's human. She's a baby. <laughs> Yeah, Paul. Hey, mate. Hey, mate. What I'm proposing is that we, we take her over to the emergency centre for the simple fact she's going to probably need to be anaesthetised and also monitored throughout the night. Um, and she also needs something called a, a, a gastric lavage. Zena needs her stomach pumped urgently to purge the toxin from her system. I'm assuming she's actually been given a fair sized bait there. At the moment, it's, it's touch and go. The seriously ill Rottweiler now needs to be transferred to the clinic's emergency referral hospital, SASH. Zena is in a critical condition. How are you going? You've got Zena. 
just to fill you in later. She came in about an hour and a half ago, yeah. and she was tremoring and, and basically in a fair bit of distress. Mm -hmm. So just putting both tubes in. We're trying to fill up the stomach with warm water and then basically empty it out. So trying to physically remove all of the toxin from her stomach. The thing I'm most mindful of at the moment is the potential for brain damage. Uh, we saw Xena's temperature shoot through the roof to above 40 degrees. Now, if it goes over 41 or, heaven forbid, 42, then there's a very real risk of brain damage. The gastric tube has been removed and now the vets can only wait and hope. What we're looking for over the next few hours is basically a reduction in the amount of tremoring she has. We want her whole nervous yeah. system to calm down. The devastated owner finally arrives. We just say, no, we are doing everything we can. Paul is a Sydney policeman and he's certain this has been an act of pure malice. If you've got a beef with me and a bit of beef with something, but to, to kill a dog, to, to try to kill a dog, which they would have done if, if we weren't home. So the next few hours pretty much decide Zena's future. If she can metabolise the toxin that's in her system, keep that temperature down and begin to show some significant signs of improvement, then the future looks good. If not, if she continues to tremor, if she goes into seizure, then it's bad news. It's very bad news. Lisa. Good, how are you? Good, thank you. You must better. be happy. A lot better. A yeah, lot better come see her. Yeah. You'll be over the moon. At the emergency hospital, Zena has made it through the night. Oh, yeah, look at you wearing your tail. That tail's going. Oh. So she'll still be quite groggy yeah, today and even probably into tomorrow. Just it's been a close call. Zena could have suffered severe brain damage, but remarkably, she's okay. And she looks so normal now. Yeah. To see her lying there last night broke my heart. And, um, but to see her again today would complete turnaround. I can't describe it ecstatic, relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel camera shy now. You yeah, always want to be the centre of attention. <laughs> Back at home, Zena is showing no signs of her snail bait ordeal. I'm ecstatic that she's here now. And it uh, looks like we'll be moving out soon. Um, I just can't take the risk that something like this is going to happen again. But I'm happy that, I'm so happy that she's here now. <laughs> what happened? Left them somewhere. Uh, attacked by a dog. Thank you. Uh, let's have a listen. Back in Australia at the Bondi Referral Hospital of Sash, Emergency vet Dr Lisa Chimes is urgently assessing a badly injured Burmese cat. Coco has been rushed in, she's been mauled by a dog, she's got serious injuries, she's in shock and she needs emergency care right away. Let's give you a little prick now, sweetie pie. Look at that. Distressed owners Tracy and Vance found the traumatised cat just moments after the shocking attack. She was cowering in the next door neighbour's yard and just howling. Um, I went over and tried to pick her up, but just, just she wouldn't let me near it. It, it, it was a horrible, horrible thing to see. Hi, right, darling. Oh, there are some bite wounds over there. Yeah. Coco's really being beaten up. She's having breathing difficulty. We're giving her oxygen, trying to place an IV catheter, and I need to take a better look at those wounds to see how bad the damage is. Good girl, Coco. I'm just clipping off Coco's hair at the moment to try and work out where these wounds are. The concern is that what I'm seeing on the skin is really just the tip of the iceberg. If Coco's got serious injuries underneath these skin wounds, her life is in jeopardy. It really worries me when a five kilo cat like Coco has been attacked by a big dog. 
bite wounds not only cause tissue damage by tearing and shredding the skin and muscles, but they also inject bacteria which can have life-threatening complications. Oh, darling. This dog has really got into Coco. There, there's a lot of dead space under the skin, a lot of areas for, for infection to spread. So trying to flush out as much as possible. He's really had a good go at her. Suddenly, Coco's condition starts to deteriorate. You want some oxygen for him? Yeah, we'll put a mask on him. He's really breathing up. What we're going to do now is get Coco into the oxygen cage so she can stabilise a little bit more because she's having some breathing difficulty. Now that might simply be because she's in shock, but it might also mean that she's got some injuries in her chest from the bite wounds. Really struggling, aren't you, sweetie? You just breathe in that oxygen. Coco's devoted owners have been anxiously waiting for any news about their critically injured little girl. So we've clipped up all the hair over her rump and she's got lots of bite marks there. The problem with that is we don't actually know what damage they've done underneath. So best thing to do for her would be to take some x-rays off her and see what's going on in her abdomen and any obvious bony abnormalities. And Can we see her? Yeah, absolutely. Tracy and Vance are in a little bit of shock. Their beloved cat has just been mauled by a dog and now I'm here telling them that her life could be in jeopardy. And that's just a lot to take in. Okay, so here she is. Oh. Open it up here. Hello, baby. My princess. You had a tough day. It's really hard to say goodbye because I don't know what's going to happen to her. I don't know whether she's going to be okay. It's very tough. We'll look after her. Ryan, I promise you. she's in very good hands here, but I, I can't really give you any guarantees until we know exactly what she's done to herself. Right. Okay, so. Seeing Tracy and Vance visit Coco in the oxygen cage and watching them with her made me really sad. Thanks, Lisa. Right, no Thank problem. you. They absolutely love their cat, and if I can't get her back to them, it's going to break my heart as well. Hello. All right, darling, that's OK. All right, kitty kid. Back at Sash, little Coco is fighting for her life after being savagely mauled by a dog. What a good girl. We're about to take some x-rays of Coco. We don't know the extent of her injuries and looking at these pictures will give me a lot more indication as to how bad the damage is. Lisa is worried the little Burmese may need surgery on her shocking bite wounds. Okay, so I'm looking at her chest. As I'm looking at the x-rays, I'm focusing on different parts of her body to see if this dog's teeth have done some serious damage. So I'm looking for any fractures, any broken bones. My goodness, this is amazing. I just can't believe this. This is not what I was expecting. Coco is only five kilograms, and as I'm looking at her x-rays, I just can't believe that she hasn't got any broken bones and that her abdomen and chest are looking okay for now. It's quite amazing. But the little cat isn't out of danger yet. Lisa needs to find out if any of her organs have been damaged or if she has internal bleeding. So we're just doing an emergency ultrasound on Coco, trying to look for any areas where she's had trauma. So any sign of fluid in the abdomen, which might indicate bleeding or rupture of an organ. So her bladder looks fine. Kidneys look fine. No sign of fluid anywhere. Coco's passed all the tests for now, but she still has some pretty nasty skin wounds. They can become infected, and that can quickly be fatal. Lisa's urgent priority now is to keep Coco's wounds stabilised and stop the spread of infection. The next 12 hours will be critical. She's nowhere near out of the woods yet. I just hope, for Coco's sake and her family's, that we can get her through it. That's a girl. Coco, how are you feeling? Hmm? At Sash, it's been an anxious night for Lisa and the team, monitoring traumatised bite victim Coco. 
When I look at those wounds, I'm concerned about them. They're swollen, they're painful, and I'm worried that if we don't take her to surgery, that they'll break down, become infected, and that could put Coco's life in jeopardy. Tracy, hi, hi come hi. through. Thank you. Waiting has been agonising for Coco's distressed owner, Tracy. Now, Lisa has to deliver some bad news. So, the wounds, remember I said it was a possibility that they're not going to drain very well? Mm. Well, today that's our, our concern and the best thing we can do for that would be to actually do a surgical procedure where we open up that skin, really debride out all the dead tissue, all the damaged muscle under there and put some drains in. If we are proactive and do it early, then she's got a much better chance of recovery and a much um, reduced chance of complications. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I think. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. It's, uh, actually, I was hoping for for better news today. When I heard the word surgery, you know, I started crying because I I, I think I had an expectation that um, she'd just have a few days here. It's a worrying time. That's what I'll spend the day doing now, worrying about her. Hey, Jess. This is Coco. Just Hi, having Coco. debridement of her dog bite wounds. So they're pretty nasty. Poor Coco. I mean, it's not bad enough that she was attacked by a vicious dog yesterday. And now she has to go under the knife to have those wounds attended to. This poor cat is 13 years old and in the last 24 hours has probably been through more than she has in her whole life. Surgeon Ricky Cashmore is performing the operation. So we'll just open this up and we'll have a look underneath and see what damage has been done. Oh, look at that. It's gone right through into the muscle. It does go down through the spinal muscles, right down onto the vertebrae, and it also reaches to the pelvis as well. So it's a pretty deep and nasty injury. She's in a very dangerous situation. Yeah. That tooth mark in the skin was just the tip of the iceberg. The tooth has actually gone right down into the muscles surrounding the spine. The depth of the dog bite injuries on Coco's body is far worse than expected. We're right down between the muscles of that left hind leg. So it's split down to the pelvis on this side too. Ah. Yeah, the biggest risk for Coco is going to be infection. It's hoped that deep flushing will help remove any bacteria that may have come from the dog's teeth. What we've done here today will minimise the chance of infection, but still, she's in a very dangerous situation. Yeah. Seeing the extent of these injuries, I can only imagine how terrified she would have been when that dog pounced on her and mauled her. Well, I'm, I'm pretty happy now. I think that's pretty clean. I'm comfortable that we can close her up. We've got these two drains in place that are going to continue draining the fluid from beneath the skin. And um, we'll wait and see how she recovers. Come on, Coco. You've got to wake up now, honey. Every animal recovers from anaesthetics differently. Some sit up right away and others take a long time to wake up like Coco. She's an older cat, she's cold, she's got lots of factors delaying her recovery. Hopefully she pulls through this because this little cat does not need another disaster. Okay, so breast. Yeah, moving a bit more. It's coming around now. There you go. That's better. Coco has finally recovered from the anaesthetic and right now she's conscious, she's groggy on pain relief, but at least she's still with us. Coco will have to be closely monitored around the clock to make sure there are no signs of deterioration. You've been through so much, sweetheart. That's a brave girl. Hi, Coco. Hi, darling. How are you doing? It's now been five days since little cat Coco was rushed into Sash after a shocking dog attack. Let's get you out. That's a girl. Hi, honey. Coco was viciously mauled by a dog. She had surgery, had a bit of a rocky recovery, and now it's time for her drains to come out. 
just going to feel a little bit funny. Ready, Coco? We'll just do it quick. Well done. Good girl. You didn't even notice. But Lisa won't be able to relax until Coco starts to show some interest in food. No more of this hunger strike. We're offering her different things, but she just turns her nose up at it. I'm going to try again today and see how she goes. Hey, Coco, you want to try some of this? I take Coco's favourite food off the shelf, I warm it up, I prepare it nicely, and I put the bowl in front of her face. Oh, that's pretty good. That's a good girl. Look at you. Wow. Hey, that's so good. She's ravenous. <laughs> Within a matter of seconds, she just lays into it. And I am smiling a lot because this means that she is almost ready to go home. You're going to have some war wounds, but at least you've made it through, huh? You're pretty good. Coco. Hi, oh, darling. It's time to go home. Girl, you want to hop in here? Hey, you're a good girl. At Sash, it's good news for dog bite victim Coco. Coco is looking fantastic today. She's eating well, she's bright, she's happy, she's comfortable, and finally she is ready to go home. Owners Tracy and Vance are relieved their little girl's ordeal is finally over. I've prepared a little room for her at home. Everything's ready for her, and we just want to take her home now and look after her. That's a girl. And they're going to be very happy to see you. Yes, they are. Let's go. Bye. Hello. Hello. There she is. Look who's here. Hey, Coco. Hello. Hello, Coco. Oh, good girl. She looks fantastic. Hey. Mm. Here we go. Good girl. There we go. <laughs> Coco. Oh, you like that. When I brought Coco out to see Vance and Tracy, the smiles on their faces. At one point, they didn't even know if she was going to make it, and now she's in their arms again, purring and as happy as can be. And now she's just going to have to turn some heads with that new haircut. <laughs> Coco's so lucky, and we're lucky to have her. I can't believe that we're, we're leaving with her today. Thank you so much. No Thank problem. you. Thanks for looking. Thank no you, problem. Thank you. Thank you. She's in good hands at home, I know yes. that. And indoors only now, yep. please. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Treating Coco has been a little bit of a roller coaster. She wasn't looking good at all. And now, finally, she's going home. And that makes me one very happy vet. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, 11-month-old Juice has been rushed in by his distraught owners after a shocking screwdriver attack by callous burglars. I just don't understand how something like this could happen to him. Like, he didn't deserve this. He probably just went up to them and jumped up and started licking them. He's so innocent. Oh. OK, so we're just going to lift him onto the table, OK? Dr Laura Musgrove is the first emergency vet on the scene. Oh As I get up close, he's got lacerations all over his face and it looks like he's been stabbed in the eye. There's blood everywhere, there's blood on the inside of his collar. He looks awful, the owners are really upset. And honestly, I can't really see a lot to do with the eye because he's squinting, but it doesn't look good at a first glance. Come on, darling. It's all right. Poor little man. Distressed owners Meg and Todd are horrified at the sickening attack on their beloved Staffy. We think they've personally thrown juice. Juice has followed them into their house and he's startled them. And they've thrown juice into the wall. In yeah, a massive hole in the wall with blood oh, all through it still. Sweetie pie. It seems like they've hit his head against a door frame and there's blood all over the door frame. So it's just. I uh, can't even comprehend. Oh, it's sore, isn't it? Hey. It's all right, sweetie. This left eye looks, like, totally perforated. Um, and he's got some other wounds as well on his face. <clears throat> oh, I know, I know. We'll need to get a bit more pain relief on board and do a better look there. Mm. I'm just going to take this off. 
That's quite tight already, isn't it? Well done. Here we go. Good boy. I'm just going to try and have a better look at the eye using the ophthalmoscope because I really just want to see if things are intact or what the extent of the damage is. But it's a real mess in there. Oh, sweetie pie. It's sore, isn't it, he? His eye looks terrible. Poor little man. It just makes me so angry that someone could have done this to him. Can we hold your eye open a bit? Good lad. It's really difficult to see a lot with Juice's eye at the minute. Um, there's a lot of bleeding. We can't even see his pupil. I think his cornea is possibly ruptured, and I'm not even sure he can see out of that eye at this stage. So it's looking pretty bad. All right, darling. This next bit's not going to be too nice, though, is it? Good boy. Can we hold your eye open a bit? Good lad. Looking at Juice's eye, it's actually really difficult to know how much damage there is. There's so much swelling, and he's holding it close because of the pain. I want to make him comfortable, flush out any debris and blood clots in there, and assess his other wounds. Should we just give a little clean of your face? Mm. Good boy. Yeah, it looks much better now, doesn't it? <laughs> I think we might leave it at that for that eye now. It's not the nicest thing, is it, buddy? <laughs> All right. A bit more. With juice stabilised and given pain relief, Laura now has the difficult task of talking to heartbroken owners Meg and Todd. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Okay, I'm Laura. I know we briefly met a little while ago yeah. and things were a little bit stressful. Um, okay, so first of all, I just want you to know he's okay. All right, so we've got him stabilised. I mean, I think he's very sore and probably in a little bit of shock from what's happened, okay? You know, if it is a screwdriver that's gone in. At this stage, we don't know how much damage it's done. We need to let things settle a little bit, but I guess the worst case thing is that he could end up losing that eye. Okay, so what we'll do is the next step is we'll get our ophthalmologist to come and have a look at it and just see, you know, whether we can save it. Okay? Thank you. It's all right. I'm not sure Meg and Todd have been able to grasp exactly what I'm saying. I think they're still in shock from everything that's happened, and I'm not sure they understand that Juice could potentially lose his sight, and worst case scenario, he could lose that eye. Hey, Juice. Juice, look who's here. There you go. Juicy. Juicy. Take care, buddy. I hate seeing him, like, just... He's never, so helpless. Ever, ever crying like yeah, that. he's never made that noise before. So I just hope he settles a little bit. I feel really sorry for Meg and Todd. They've had a day from hell. Not only have they had their house robbed, they've now got to leave their beautiful boy here in hospital. I just really hope we can save that eye. Okay, guys. All, all good? Right, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, honestly, our pleasure. Come on. Oh. At SASH, emergency vet Dr Laura Musgrove has called in ophthalmologist Dr Alison Groth to look at Juice's horrific eye injury. He's been stabbed in his eye with a screwdriver and other places on his face, but this eye really worries me because I'm not really sure whether whether he can see anything out of there, so... Wow. I'm hoping we can find out a little bit more and potentially save the eye, but, I mean, have you ever seen anything like that I've before? Never seen anything like Awful. It's awful, it's awful isn't it, darling? It's horrible. If it's a pretty major injury for Juice, the eye has been ruptured, some of the tissue from inside of the eye is coming out, and the eye does not respond to light at all. When I move my hand towards his face, he doesn't show any normal reflexes, which is why I'm worried that there is injury deeper within the eye. So, it's, I mean, it's not looking very good. Um, he, he's, he doesn't seem to have any vision in that eye. All right, well, we'll ultrasound to see whether there's any damage further within, and okay. I'll let you know how we go. Okay, mister. Good luck. Good boy. 
Well, fortunately, I think Alison has the same fears as me, that there's a lot of swelling there. At the minute, we don't think he can see out of that eye, and so I think she's probably as worried as I am that he might end up losing that eye. It's a very collapsed eye, so it's very difficult to um, see what I'm doing. Yeah. Poor guy. So this here is the retina. The retina should be lying right against the back of the globe, but it's become separated. And when the retina is not in its normal position, it doesn't work properly. And if the retina doesn't work, then there's not going to be any vision. It's really, really sad. Yeah, it doesn't look good. So the ultrasound confirmed the injury was really severe, um, and the best thing for Juice is going to be to remove the eye. Ah, oh, poor puppy. Certainly no chance of saving this eye. The decision was made quite easy for us by the fact that he wasn't going to have a chance to see. So the first thing we do is remove all of the attachments and then manage any bleeding. It's generally a surgery that has a very low risk of complications, but all of the tissue is very inflamed and very swollen. And this is going to take a while because it actually is a bit more difficult than usual. With the surgery underway, it's a harrowing wait for Juice's distressed young owners, Todd and Meg. I just feel so bad that he's going to lose his eye only being 11 months old and the rest of his life not having an eye is just so sad. But he's, uh, he's pretty strong and happy, so... Mm, happy, playful little dog. He'll still be strong anyway. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be OK, but yeah, I guess we're just in shock. There's a lot of bruising in here. Alison is also shocked to discover Juice's wound has penetrated far deeper than first thought. The injury does appear to extend all the way through the eye and actually involves the back part of the eye as well. It wouldn't have taken too much more force for there to have been fracture of the skull and even injury to the brain. It's now time for the critical part of Juice's surgery. This is it. Poor little eyeball. Just rinsing it out with some saline to make sure it's nice and clean and reduce the likelihood of infection. As sad as it is that he's lost this eye, it will just heal like a cut and there will be a small scar potentially and he'll just look like he's winking. We're done. I'm very happy with how it's gone and I think he'll bounce back really well. Um, we've just got to take extra special care of that remaining eye. Boy. Hello, my darling. How are you feeling today? Hey, how are we feeling? Do you want to come out? Oh, let's have a little look. Hello, hello. Hang on there. It's been just 24 hours since American Staffy Juice had major surgery to remove his left eye. Come on, then. Come on, Juice, this way. Good boy. After a brutal attack with a screwdriver left the 11-month-old critically injured, Juice has made a remarkable recovery. Juice, who's this? But before he can get the all-clear to go home, Laura and intern Grace need to give him a final check. Well, he's so much brighter, isn't he? He's been really comfortable. When Juice came in the other night, he was, you know, in shock, he was whimpering, his eye looked absolutely terrible. Oh, how does that feel to have your head back? Today, he is so much happier, he's definitely on the road to recovery, and I can't wait to send him home with Mom and Dad. Can I have a little look, my sweet? Yes. Oh, boy. It looks good. so good. This is all stitched up nicely. Yeah. Wow, well, Juice. I think that looks great. You know what that means? Do you know what that means? We can go see Mum and Dad. For owners Meg and Todd, it's been a heartbreaking ordeal and they're anxious to see their brave boy. All we've been thinking about is being able to finally come and see him again. So, I, yeah, I just I don't even care what he looks like. I just want to bring him home. Come on, then. Come on. We're going to go see Mum and Dad. Who have we got out here? <gasps> Who's that? <laughs> There we go. Beautiful. Words cannot explain how happy I'm feeling right now. As soon as we saw Juice's face, his tongue just hanging out, 
Oh, it's the best feeling I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> oh, <aren't you>? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you glad to see Mum and Dad? <laughs> How much better does he look, hey? Laura has prescribed massive doses of TLC as Juice recovers with his relieved and doting owners at home. It looks like the operation was done a week ago and it was done yesterday. Like, it's amazing how Such a good job. tidy it is now and now it's just keeping it from getting infected and hopefully the hair will grow over it and he'll just have some tough little scars and a permanent wink. OK, Juice, come on then. Come this on. way. Thank you so much honestly. for everything. Come on, Juice. Come on. Come on, Juice. Home's this way. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Sad. Juice experienced probably one of the most horrific attacks I've ever seen on a dog. And to actually come out of it how he has is brilliant. Yeah, he might have lost an eye, but he's going to go home with Megan Todd and he's going to go on to live a happy, normal life. Go. Good boy. I'm so happy. He's so cute. Come on, Juice. Get <laughs> Chris finds himself on call. <laughs> this man's goat has been attacked by a hyena. Can you explain that I'm a, a veterinarian from Australia, so he knows what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah. Now you it's a big herd, but every single goat is important. When I first see the goat that he's worried about, I can see why there's been some concern. The goat has a pretty serious injury. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's nasty. So the, the hyena actually grabbed this goat and dragged it out of the boma? Yes. From what this herdsman can tell us, it sounds like the hyena has actually jumped over the fence, grabbed the goat, pulled it out, and then tried to essentially rip its face apart. This is a problem here because what we have is a very important part of the goat mm -hmm. with the nose and the mouth. Mm -hmm. The hyena will have a lot of bacteria in its mouth, but also the goat has a lot of bacteria around here that can cause an infection. Chris needs to act fast to try and stop infection spreading before it kills the goat. What I want to do first is, is clean this area, get rid of all the dead bits of skin, so it'll look like I'm making the wound bigger but there's a reason why I'm doing it. Even though this goat has been able to escape from this hyena, the injuries it's been left with are quite severe. It has a fracture in the roof of its mouth, plus now it has quite a nasty infection. Ooh. That smell. The stench indicates just how quickly the wound has deteriorated. Does the goat have a name? Can I get in Pussy. 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 Yeah. The goat is called Pussy. 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 It's something. Yeah. Ready? So Pussy. Hey, Pussy. It's OK. Yeah. And these are office scissors yeah. usually used to cut paper and they're being asked to yeah. perform surgery now. This looks a little bit strange, but there's no chance yeah. this will heal unless the skin is actually healthy and has a blood supply, so I'm scraping it back, trying to get down to the healthy tissue, so when I bring healthy tissue in against healthy tissue, it will actually heal. Chris needs to stitch the wound, but with limited equipment in such a remote area, it's going to be a challenge. If Pussy was in the vet clinic, I'd pull out a perfectly sterilised surgical kit and grab needle holders. Here, I don't have that. Pussy already has a nasty wound and a nasty infection. Without treatment, in this heat, with this amount of flies around, she wouldn't last more than a few days. Hey, Pussy, it's OK. This type of infection needs antibiotics. There's no question about that. But the only antibiotics I have in my kit are for dogs and cats, which are not going to be suitable for Pussy. Have you got your malaria medication in the car? Can you, can you go and grab it? Yeah, sure. Human malaria tablets from the crew's personal medical kit could now save the goat. These tablets are normally given orally to treat malaria, basically. But if you grind them up into a powder, 
and mix it with water. There's no reason why we can't flush that into that wound and kill all the bacteria that are sitting in there and really give this gut the best chance of kicking this infection. We need to make sure this gets everywhere. Once Chris has thoroughly drenched the wound, he can close it up. OK, now we'd try for a stitch. Okay. Get it with that. If pussy was in the vet clinic, I'd pull out a perfectly sterilised surgical kit and grab needle holders. Here, I don't have that. This is just all that improvisation. We're having to use whatever we can find. This is what I'm going to use to put the stitches in. A pair of pliers. OK, pussy's going to have to be very brave. <laughs> With no local anaesthetic, I'm having to ask a fair bit of this goat. I'm going to have to stitch close that massive wound. I keep on being surprised at how calm pussy is being to what I'm asking of it. But you've got to remember, life's tough out here. They have to be really hardy and put up with a lot just to survive. One more stitch, OK? We don't want to close up the whole thing. Okay. For the air to be flowing in is a good thing. OK. After closing the wound, Chris wants to give the goat one final medication. All right, I think we're done. As an extra boost to Pussy's immune system, I'm going to give her a worm treatment. That way, all her reserves, all her energy can be directed into healing this wound rather than having to worry about parasites. <laughs> that will help Pussy get through the next, next few weeks. Pussy does not need any more stress. Can you tell him that Pussy is no pussy. Pussy is a tough goat. Pussy is not bad. Pussy's good. Pussy's good. good. Yeah. Pussy should be okay. Yes. I'm very impressed. Yeah. Very good goat. Yeah. Okay, you look after pussy. Yeah. Yeah. If I wasn't already relieved enough that my hardware pliers and my anti-malaria tablets had hopefully made a difference here, it turns out pussy's a mother. This treatment could have saved two lives. It's been a marathon surgery under difficult conditions, and the herdsman wants to thank Chris with a local delicacy. Milk. What's, what's this? Milk of camels. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's good. Mm. <laughs> Warm camel milk. It's so strong, a really strong flavour, like quite silky and fatty and very warm. Somehow very good. Back in the vet clinic, it's not uncommon for someone to drop in a bottle of wine or champagne as a way of saying thank you for treating their animal. But in all my years of working, I've never received a gourd of camel milk as a way of saying thanks. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, sweetheart, let's try again. The tape there, handy somewhere? Yep, I'll okay. Alex is giving the terrified little dog some much needed pain relief as quickly as possible. When the painkillers start to take effect, Roxy is finally starting to be less agitated. Oh, sweetheart. Do you want to get an idea of how bad these wounds are? Before Alex can start investigating any possible internal injuries, she needs to treat the nasty bite wounds where the snake latched on to Roxy's neck. I just want to see how bad these bite wounds are. I cannot imagine how terrified she must have been. And she can't get away because she can't walk properly on her back legs. Roxy's a tiny dog and a python's bite can be so powerful. I just want to see there's a lot of blood coming from here. and I. As Alex investigates the severe bite on Roxy's neck, she's suddenly alarmed that the snake may have inflicted a fatal wound on its helpless little victim. I'm not sure he's not actually lacerated the jugular. Amazingly, her breathing is actually pretty good. So she mustn't have got wrapped around her chest, but obviously bitten her around her neck. Although Roxy was badly bitten by the snake during the attack, her jugular wasn't lacerated as Alex first feared. She doesn't walk anyway on her back legs, so she must be permanently paralysed. And obviously the owner carries her around, so... X-rays will show if any of Roxy's internal organs have been crushed by the powerful snake. From here, Roxy's going to be transferred into intensive care and the overnight team will take some X-rays to make sure there's no other injuries, like rib fractures. For now, the little dog will be closely monitored for any changes in her condition. Oh, you're such a brave girl. It's been almost 24 hours since Roxy was attacked in her backyard by a python. I'm surprised Roxy's coping as well as she is, but she is going to need pain relief and she's going to need antibiotics for some time. Hey, you going to see your mum? Roxy's traumatised owner Jenny is desperate to find out how her precious little dog is doing. Good girl. I'm really excited to reunite Roxy and Jenny. It's going to be such a special moment. I've got someone here to see you. Oh, my little bunny. You can... might pop her down on the floor, OK? Mm -hmm. You can pop down here. Oh, good girl. Oh, Roxy, there we go. We got gotcha. you. Good girl, it's your mum. Hello, sweetie. Hello, little Roxy. Oh, you're a good little girl, aren't you? You've been in the wards. Oh, yes. <laughs> had a tough old time. Roxy is one very lucky little girl. If Jenny hadn't been there, I don't think she would have made it. So Edwin's calling me a hero. Oh, <laughs> really, you not, are a hero. I'm terrified of snakes. Well, that's, why, that's what makes it and so when special. And my daughter said, you know, grab something and just try and get the thing off her. And I just stuck that in. The broom handle went through. and. I didn't know what I was doing, really, oh, you know. Just a mother trying to save a <laughs> little girl. And because of her legs, you know, she doesn't run. She no, can't, get, can't away. get away. Well, you know, she, she wobbles and, and falls and that, you know. So I'm always very careful. Took x-rays of, of Roxy mm -hmm. and what we were looking for, did she have any fractured ribs or anything like that, which is quite common, that mm -hmm. it could have easily crushed her. So yes. the fact that... She, um, she hasn't got any fractures and she oh, hasn't got any internal that. damage is, is pretty, it's, it's a miracle. I mean, she's remarkable how even with everything that's happened, she's really doing so well. And I mean, if she's eating and we can keep her comfortable, then, you know, we want to try mm. to get her home to you, so. I don't mind if you think to keep her. For a bit longer. For a bit yeah. longer, she's just been through to so keep much. an eye on her. Yeah. yeah, Because if anything happens, you know what to do. Yeah. She'll eat some chicken. Let's just see, it's a little bit warm there. 
bit of chicken. Ooh, that looks like someone who's interested in she chicken. She loves chicken. Does she? I was hoping she would. I can see she's interested, but she just doesn't quite feel like it yeah, yet. She's, probably she's just not quite ready. Just a bit weak and thinking. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I feel a little bit sick, and with the even with the drugs, she's you know the pain relief yeah. she's had. Sometimes it can make them just feel a bit funny in their tummy. And I think she's tired. She's ready to go back. I and think. we'll get her back on her pain relief and everything like that. So, yeah. okay. Bye, sweetie. Bye. So see you tomorrow, Mum. All right. We'll see you so tomorrow. Much. Okay. Yes. Okay. Come on, sweetheart. Let's get you back to bed, darling. Rox is going to spend another night in the ICU and hopefully by tomorrow her condition will have improved. Hey, I saw your bed out. Hey, how are you okay, sweetheart? Alex can't believe how well little Roxy is recovering. No in there. Oh. Nobody likes to be in hospital, do they? Oh, darling. Hey, but I think you're doing very well. The ICU team tell me that Roxy is really kicking goals today. She's eating, she's bright and comfortable. I think she's ready to go home. Oh, you're such a brave girl. Such a brave girl. Hey? After astounding everyone with her miracle recovery, Roxy can now be returned to her very relieved owner, Jenny. Who I've got here. <gasps> oh, look at you. We'll pop her in a bit. Oh, that looks nice and cosy in there. Look at that. Good girl. Roxy. Hello, sweetie pie. Mm. Oh, look at her. She's so excited to see you. <laughs> Is it good to see her again? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Hey. Look at you. You've missed her a bit? Oh, I couldn't sleep last night. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to be checking on her every five oh, minutes. Yes. Tonight. Just like having another baby again. You are a brave little girl, hey? Oh, definitely. Well, let's get her home, I think. Let's go. Good girl. I gotcha. All right, let's get you home. Tell you what, if I see that snake again and it gets one of my aunt, I'll know exactly what to do. <laughs> oh, thank you You're ever so, so welcome. much. I really so much appreciate okay. everything that you got. You look do. after her, okay, I and you look after you. yourself. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen for more great content. And for free, exclusive, never seen before Bondi Vet stories, you can sign up to bondipet.com, and you can do so via the link in the description.